Good morning everyone and welcome back to the Bakehouse Kitchen. Today I'm going to do something really different because at the moment rhubarb's in season and we really like rhubarb. I haven't had it very often because obviously there's a limited amount of things you can do with rhubarb I guess. But anyway we found this recipe in the Delicious magazine for a rhubarb and custard tart. So that is what we're going to make today. To start off with, you need to make some pastry. So I'm not going to go through the whole thing with you because we made pastry on another recipe and John will put the link in here for that recipe. Um, this one's exactly the same method wise. So you still put your butter in and everything else exactly the same as the other recipe. The only difference with this recipe is that you're going to use 90 grams of icing sugar uh, 340 grams of plain flour, 170 grams of butter, uh, an egg, which is another big difference, there's no egg in the other recipe, and some um, ice cold water. So everything's exactly the same apart from the addition of ice and sugar, which should make your pastry shorter, and an egg, which will enrich it. So the method's exactly the same, I just wanted to let you know that those ingredients are different. So I'm going to go ahead and make my pastry and blind bake the case and I'll come back to you when that's done because we did all that previously. So I'll be back in a while. So the pastry's done and it's now in the fridge resting. And so I'm going to give you the ingredients and the next step of this recipe. It's actually quite a long recipe, there's nine steps to it and there's like three distinct pieces so pastry making was the first one then we got the preparation of the rhubarb and then the preparation of the custard so you're going to need about 450 grams of rhubarb and they reckon that's about four large stalks and we're going to need to cut them into four to five centimeter chunks and i've looked up online because i wasn't sure as to whether we needed to peel rhubarb because what we're going to do is it's going to macerate which means it's going to sit in a bowl with a load of sugar and stuff on it and so some of the juices will come out um, <clears throat> but then you're going to roast it so I wasn't sure whether if we peeled it it would lose its shape and apparently that is the case so what they're saying is when you're using rhubarb particularly if you're going to roast it make sure you use a really sharp knife to cut it so you don't get horrible stringy bits and it should be absolutely fine. Um, so for the rhubarb, we need four large stalks of rhubarb, 50 grams of ice, uh, castor sugar, and the seeds of half a vanilla pod. Now, these little black bits on this plate probably don't look the most appealing thing, but these are actually the inside scrapings of half of a vanilla pod. So that's, and it smells wonderful. So that's for your rhubarb and then the custardy bit you need 200 mils of whole milk fresh whole milk you need 300 mils of double cream you need a hundred grams of castor sugar you need two medium free-range eggs but you need three additional yolks because obviously this is going to be your custard so um, I've separated the egg yolks and that's just the eggs and the, and the extra yolks. And last of all is two tablespoons of corn flour, which is obviously going to help it all thicken. So what I'm going to do next is the rhubarb. Um, I'm going to chop it, like I said, into pieces of about that sort of size. Stick them into my bowl with my sugar and the seeds from my vanilla pod and then keep giving them a stir around and let it sit for a little while to sort of get juicy so i'll be back in a second so that is what rhubarb beginning to macerate looks like it looks like there's quite a lot of sugar in there but um once the juices start flowing it should all stick together and it'd be really lovely so i'm going to put this to one side and the next step is to re-roll the pastry and blind bake, sorry, blind bake 
the tarp tin. So let's put this out of the way. Don't cut off the excess yet. So this one's gonna go back in the fridge for another 20 minutes because obviously the pastry needs to relax again before it, otherwise it will shrink when it goes into the oven. And welcome back again. Now, the thing I'm finding with this recipe is it is very time consuming and bitty. So I apologize for that if it shows like that on film, but it's just the way it is. So, pastry case is now rested. It's completely sort of dry. I'm going to put a piece of greaseproof paper. Best to screw it up so it gets into all the little cracks. Greaseproof paper into the flan tray. Load it up with baking beans. And that is going to go into a oven at 160 if you have a fan oven or 180 if you don't um, for 25 minutes. So that's that thing. I'll do that sec in a second. But I wanted to show you how the rhubarb is coming along. It's been macerating now for half an hour or so, maybe a little bit more. Um, and all of the sugar is sort of gone syrupy and unctuous, I'd say. Looks absolutely delicious. I remember when I was a girl, I used to eat rhubarb roll. Just stick it in a sugar bowl. But I'm not that brave anymore. So, um, here it is. This is what it looks like. Right, let's get the pastry case in. And then... We'll be back with the next step. Okay, so I know I said that this is a very bitty um, recipe, but I didn't read the little thingy on the side, which basically says that the custardy part can be made up to two days in advance. So whilst our baking blind tin is in the oven, and the rhubarb is still macerating, we're going to go on ahead and make the custard. So, to start off with, you need to heat, heat the milk and cream in a pan over medium heat with the remaining vanilla pod. So, milk, cream into a saucepan. Ouch. I wasn't going to get involved today, but you did actually shock me with the I used to eat rhubarb roll. And I just wanted to say, that's a very big mixing bowl you got there, love. I know, but I've got to do a lot of whisking in a second, so... And you've already used the smaller one for the rhubarb. Yes, exactly. Hence why it's the kind of a messy bits and pieces so, recipe. bit of um, vanilla pod goes in with that, just to get every bit of last flavour out of it. Now, you need to heat the milk and cream on the stove until it gets very hot but not boiling. So let's stick it on and see how we go. And then whilst that is heating, we need to whisk the eggs, yolk, sugar and corn flour in a large bowl. Large bowl. Well, certainly a large bowl, yeah. So eggs go in. Remember that two whole eggs and three extra yolks. We will be using the spare egg whites on a recipe. Yeah, we've got another recipe day. coming. Sugar, 100 grams. I believe you can also freeze egg whites. You yeah. can, okay. but if you freeze them, you, it says to um, gently whip them, right. like beat them up a bit before you do it. I don't know why. But that's well, I guess mostly when, when you take them out of the freezer, you are going to be using them for meringues or something, so you would be whipping them up anyway, so no reason why you should whip them up beforehand. And that was our two tablespoons of corn flour. Now, we whisk this lot together. 
Yeah, I saw a trip today on the TV about glutamine. They say it's not in the arm, it's in the wrist. Which is why, why a special chef like that can lift for hours because it's all in the wrist. Honestly, okay. they're not working their arm like you are. They get tired. Right, I'll so what we're going to do is, when this is hot enough, we're going to pour the hot cream into the egg mixture, mixing it well, and then pour the whole of the custard mix back into a clean pan, put it back onto the heat, but a low to medium heat, and cook it, stirring, like stirring it gradually, so that you cook out all of the um, corn flour and stuff. So, In, that this whisking is really just to incorporate everything together properly. It's not actually about beating air into it because it's a custard after all. I have to say, while you're doing that, the, um, the art of making proper custard has kind of gone over the years, hasn't it? With yeah. Instant custard nowadays. Um, but it is a really good thing to do. I remember doing this when I was like, early 20s making custard. So. I have to hold my hands up and fess up and say I've never actually made there you go. a proper custard. I should have done this recipe. <laughs> you could have done it. Yeah. So the cream is heating. I've got little bits of black things floating around in the cream, which is lovely because it's the vanilla. Yeah, that's the vanilla pot, don't panic. Just waiting. Just waiting. Do that a lot. I know. Job will cut off and then come back when there's something to see, okay? Go make a cup of tea. Have a biscuit maybe. I'll, I'll just cut off. You don't have there. <laughs> so our creamy milk is hot, very hot and ready to go. So John's gonna pour it for me while I whisk. Yeah, like that. Just gradually. Just serving, yeah. So if you do this wrong, you're going to end up with scrambled eggs. Exactly, that's why I'm beating And then you pour the whole lot back into a clean pan. Yep. Do you need any more? No, I go back down camera. Thank you very much. And then we put this pan back onto a medium to low heat and cook it slowly until it thickens into the custard. So excuse my back, but I need to be stirring over here now. Just have to keep stirring it slowly. There's no more beating. We're just waiting for the corn flour to thicken and then the custard will be done and we can leave it to one side to cool whilst we roast our rhubarb. Hopefully doing it this way we should speed up our recipe. So after about five, six minutes of stirring, our yeah. custard is gone nicely thick. Smells I think, divine. I think you're a bit of advice. Yes, you do. There are there are moments when you make proper custard that you just don't think anything's happening. Well, I did get a bit scared when I saw little lumps appearing. I was thinking it's going to scramble, but um, it was much better when I put a whisk back in it because obviously the heat at the bottom of the pan is going to thicken it first. So, so it's lovely and thick now. Custard just suddenly happens. Don't feel slowly. So that can sit there and cool. And we've got about 10 minutes before we can get out the pastry case and then we can do the rhubarb and then we can put the whole lot together. So we're getting there, but it is step by step. So here is the blind baked pastry case. 
We need to take the beans out. That's when you find you're running out of salt. We'll take out our beans, pop them into something to cool down. Put that out of the way. So as you can see, it's um, nicely coloured. So the next thing is to just trim off the extra and then put it back in the oven for literally five minutes just so that the inside can get a little bit browner. So that is our now non-perfect tin going back in for five minutes. Right, so whilst that was finishing off and I finished stirring the custard, I have also laid out our rhubarb onto a roasting, well, baking sheet with some baking paper on so it doesn't stick, but it's ready to go into roast. So as soon as that comes out, you need to uh, reduce your temperature to... A bit lower. Yeah, to 120 with a fan. So it is quite a significant drop, or 140 without. So obviously the rhubarb, I don't know whether it cooks quick. I've never roasted rhubarb before, I'll be completely honest with you, so I don't know how it's gonna go. It's great when you roast it. So Every, we, everything's great when you roast it. I, I will suggest that you've done the right thing and put paper on this tray though. I did try doing this once before without the tray, without the paper, and you literally had to throw away the tray. I, I, I put honey on it and did it roasted rhubarb with honey and it was just a well it was fantastic but it was a nightmare tray afterwards okay so it says that when you reduce the temperature you put your rhubarb in for about 15 to 20 minutes until it's just tender it says because you want it to maintain its shape so that's our next step it's fine. so that can now cool rhubarb's going in 120, we've got fat in the Right, and that is going to take 15 to 20 minutes, so we'll check it at 10 past. So, see you in a minute. Right, everyone, I'm just about to get the rhubarb out of the oven. It has been in there for 20 minutes in ours. I checked it after 15 and it was still quite hard, but an extra five minutes has done the trick. So I'll just get it out of the oven. There we go. And finally, we can put this recipe together. So, it smells fantastic. It does smell lovely, yeah. So you need forks. And what you're going to do is you're going to put most of this rhubarb into the bottom of your tin. So just pick it up with the forks, put it around however you want it. You're going to need to save some nice bits for the top. So you've got plenty of fruit by black. I think we probably have. Well, we've got some really nice ice cream that I've made as well. Absolutely. So we will. Now, what it says is don't put any of the cooking juices from the rhubarb into the tart. As you can see, there's lovely pink juices here. But if you put it into the tart, it's going to. Um, It'll make the messed, custard watery. Yeah, probably mess basically. up the custard. Yeah. yeah. So, but it does say to save the juices for when you serve. Now, I've pretty much almost covered my flan case. I'm saving some nice pink bits for the top. Obviously, you can put in as much or as little as you like. I'm, we're all for the filling here, so. And then you put your custard over the top.
as such. That custard is delicious. And then all you do is you take some of your good bits. And that's what the spare bit is for. And you okay. put them on the top. I take it all back. You let them sink in to the custard a bit. They don't have to be stuck on the top. Obviously, you can be as artistic or rustic as you like. You're going for the rustic? I'm going rustic. There we go, last piece in. I'm really surprised how much rhubarb fitted in that. I never thought all that was going to go in there. So that's good. And that is our tart made. So, now we need to put the tart in the oven for 35 minutes until the custard is set with a wobble and then you allow it to cool before you eat it. So we need to turn the oven back up to 160 or 180 depending on whether you're a fan or not. And here we go, one tart going into the oven. So here it is out of the oven, it's got a wobble and it's just about starting to go like a golden brown around the edges which is just like it is in the picture. Um, we have to wait for it to cool and then we will test it. So come back in a few minutes. Right everybody, finished article by Bentley and Kelly. One rhubarb and custard tart looks really good i've said it looks fantastic it actually looks like the picture obviously they've used probably pink rhubarb, rhubarb to make it it's a bit more photogenic i guess but it's got that really good golden color it's got that little wobble to it it has and so we're going to cut a piece and see, and what, see what it's, it's like, like. yeah, yeah we'll give it a try trust you to want to cut straight through one of the pieces of rhubarb it's probably difficult to do as me earlier saying you don't need a sharp knife and i've already got to try and cut through slices of the rhubarb So again, if you're trying any of our recipes, I know this was quite a complicated one today, but if you're trying any of our recipes, please get in touch with us. Let us know, show us how you're getting on with them, okay? Tell us the good things, the bad things you like about the channel, and obviously whether you like the recipes. So, it doesn't look so nice on a piece of plate. No, it's going to kind of go, there's an awful lot of rhubarb in this, so it's going to go mushy. I think my ice cream will go really well with this. Move it to you out there a bit. So we have new so mugs coming as well for tea, don't we? We do. On the way. Thank you, Amazon. That was the custard bit you went for. Custard slush. Okay, so you've gone for a custard bit. I'll go for a double bit. Mm. If I go for a custard, well, I've got the lot. It's lush. That's really surprising because I was expecting it to be really sharp. No. But it's not. The rhubarb just cuts through the custard and the custard is proper job as they say, Cornwall. Again the custard's not too sweet either, so this is a really lovely flavour. You wouldn't need ice cream with that, it can help by itself. Mm. It's not as rich as you think it's going to be. It's very light. Yeah. You said to me, I really hope this is worth all the effort. Because there was lots of bits, weren't there, to it? Yeah, it's a, it was a long recipe. I think we worked it out that hands-on time was about an hour and a half of physically doing something to get this together. And then the cooking time wasn't long. I mean, the cooking time was 35 minutes. Just waiting for all those bits and pieces to be mm. done and then prepared, wasn't it? Is that worth it? Mm. Yeah, I think it is. It's still slightly, slightly warm, like room temperature yeah, warm. Yeah, we, we've had this chilling now, well, sitting on the table on a rack for about an hour, hour and a half. Well, my still worry, slightly warm. what would it be like cold? 
we won't know that till we stick it in the fridge and no. turn it till tomorrow. But and that won't be on the video. However, it's lovely. I think that's a perfect temperature for it. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, I'm not sure whether if you fridge it, it, it would might it would solid up a bit more. Yeah. Well, I don't know. But you don't like strawberries or anything in the fridge. You like to take them out, and um, we've got some here on the table in front of us, actually, in front of the camera. Uh, you prefer fruit at a natural temperature. Mm. I quite like stuff out of the fridge, so. I don't think it matters. This is really good. And I know it took a lot of work, but it'd be a fantastic party one if you've got friends coming around at yeah. some point in your life again. The um, the pastry is really good. Pastry is good, very buttery, very short. Short. Mm. Lovely. It's got that crunch to it. Yeah, the, the recipe we made the first time was a, was a salted, savoury short crust pastry. This is a sweet one. Mm. So maybe we ought to do this short crust recipe uh, and actually make it as a sweet recipe, so we've got a sweet and a savoury yeah, version on the channel. It was basically, it was, it's just pastry and it's the same method. So this is pretty much the same all the way through, but there are a couple of little ingredients in this which just made it sweet and it just worked. Can I have that bit? Yeah, you can have that bit. So, try it. I know it took a lot of work, uh, but if you've got, you know, you've got plenty of timer on your hands at the moment. Just take your time with it, make your bits and pieces, put it all together. I guarantee you'll love it. Really nice. I've not, we've not had a duff piece of food on this channel yeah. so far. We will do, and that's part of the experience. But so far, 10 out of 10 for Delicious Magazine, because I've had a couple of recipes before on Delicious Magazine that didn't work. Mm. This one really does. Yeah. Well done to them. Try it while rhubarb's in season. Yeah, Try get it, it while rhubarb's in season. Or grow your own. We put some in recently, and it's just starting to grow up. Be ready for next year. Um, see how it goes. Yeah. So, thank you very much for watching. It's been a very long video. Sorry about this. They're not normally going to be this long, but there was quite a lot of bits and pieces in yeah. this. Please subscribe. Please tell your friends. Please help the channel grow. I think when we were doing this, we're about 315, but we really want to hit that thousand. And it seems a long way off still, but we're working on it. Yep. Hit the dinghy bell as well. Do all that stuff. Keep safe, everybody. See you all later. Thanks for persevering, guys. <laughs> it was worth it. Bye-bye. Bye then. Or some more. I like that. Mm. Well, I don't mind sharing, but I mean, look, you know, it's not built. I'm not built for sharing, though.